Welcome back. We are going to start our lesson on deductive reasoning today. We have already studied inductive reasoning in the past several lessons, so today we're going to take a little bit of a turn and we are going to talk about two different laws pertaining to deductive reasoning, and they are the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. So first of all, let's go ahead and define what deductive reasoning is. And deductive reasoning is a process of logical reasoning or reasoning logically from statements that are given or facts to a conclusion. So if we're given true statements, we can use deductive reasoning to make a valid or true conclusion. So the property that stated down below in this box called the law of detachment is this. If the hypothesis of a true conditional is true, then we can assume that the conclusion is true. Symbolically, if P implies Q is true, so if the conditional is true and P is true, then Q must be true. So let's take a look at how we would use this law of detachment to solve problems. And to begin, you will be identifying your hypothesis of the conditional statement. And we're always going to have a second given statement after our conditional statement. If that second given statement matches the hypothesis, then we can make a valid conclusion. If it does not match the hypothesis, we can't make a valid conclusion. So here's example A. If a student gets an A on a final exam, then the student will pass the course. That's our conditional statement. Our hypothesis is a student gets an A on the final exam. Our conclusion is the student passes the course. Our second given statement follows. It says Felicia got an A on her history final exam. Now if that matches our hypothesis, then we can draw a conclusion. And in fact it does. Felicia got an A on her history final exam. She got an A on the final exam. So since that matches the hypothesis, we may conclude that Felicia will pass her history course. Let's look at a few more examples. If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then the ray is an angle bisector. This example for our second given statement says, Ray RS divides angle ARB so that angle ARS is congruent to angle SRB. Well, does that match the hypothesis? Our hypothesis is in red. A ray divides an angle into two congruent angles. Our conclusion is in blue. And this does match the hypothesis. We can see that it's given in red. So therefore, we may conclude that ray RS is indeed an angle bisector. Here's a third example. If two angles are adjacent, then they share a common vertex. So our hypothesis is two angles that are, are adjacent. Our conclusion is that they share a common vertex. Our second given is angle 1 and angle 2 share a common vertex. Now that matches the conclusion, not the hypothesis. So therefore we cannot draw a, a valid conclusion using the law of detachment. Here's two examples for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll give you the answers when you come back. All right, I hope you took some time to try to do those on your own. The first example says, if there is lightning, then it's not safe to be out in the open. Marla sees lightning from the soccer field. Well, our hypothesis is there is lightning. Our conclusion is it's not safe to be out in the open. So our second given statement is Marla sees lightning from the soccer field. So that matches, that coincides with our hypothesis. So we can draw a conclusion that it is not safe to be out in the open. The second statement says, if a figure is a square, then its sides have equal length. Figure A, B, C, D has sides of equal length. Well, you can see this time that the second statement matches the conclusion and not the hypothesis. So we cannot give a valid conclusion. So let's take a look at the law of syllogism. It's another law of deductive reasoning. And this allows us to state a conclusion from two true conditional statements when the conclusion of one statement is the hypothesis of the other statement. Symbolically, we're going to say if P implies Q is true and Q implies R is true, then P implies R is true. Here's an example. If it is July, then you're on summer vacation. If you're on summer vacation, then you work at a smoothie shop. So we can conclude if it's July, you work at a smoothie shop. It's kind of like the transitive property, if you've ever heard of that. 
Let's take a look at some examples on how we could use the law of syllogism. If we are given, if a figure is a square, then the figure is a rectangle. If a figure is a rectangle, then the figure has four sides. So let's take a look at our hypothesis and conclusion statements. The figure is a square is the first hypothesis. The figure is a rectangle is the conclusion, which becomes the next hypothesis. And then our last conclusion is the figure has four sides. So therefore we can say, if the figure is a square, the figure has four sides. We can use the law of syllogism. How about this one? If you do gymnastics, then you are flexible. If you do ballet, then you are flexible. Well, we can see in this one that that does not work. Okay, we don't have the conclusion of the first statement being the hypothesis of the second statement. So we cannot use the law of syllogism and make a valid conclusion. Here's two examples again for you to try. Go ahead and try these. I'll give you the answers when you come back. All right, the first one says if a whole number ends in a zero, then it's divisible by 10. If a whole number is divisible by 10, then it's divisible by 5. So let's take a look at that. Our hypothesis is a whole number ends in zero, and our conclusion is it's divisible by 10. That matches the second statement. The, the, the new hypothesis matches the first conclusion. So we can say if a whole number ends in zero, then it's divisible by 5. So that works. How about the second one? If ray AB and AD are opposite rays, then the two rays form a straight angle. If two rays are opposite rays, then the two rays form a straight angle. Well, this time that doesn't work, does it? So we cannot make a valid conclusion using the law of syllogism because the first conclusion does not match the second um, hypothesis. And it has to follow that format. All right, this problem, we can use the law of syllogism and the law of detachment together to make conclusions. So we're going to start out, if you live in Accra, then you live in Ghana. If you live in Ghana, then you live in Africa. Aisa lives in Accra. So let's see what we can come up with on this one. So our first hypothesis is living in Accra. Our first conclusion is living in Ghana. Our second hypothesis matches our first conclusion. And our second conclusion is you live in Africa. Finally, we have Aisa lives in Accra. So we may conclude from the first two statements in the law of syllogism that if you live in Accra, then you live in Africa. So the law of syllogism says if you live in Accra, then you live in Africa because the first hypothesis and, excuse me, the second hypothesis and first conclusion matches. Then we can use the law of detachment um, to make a final conclusion that Aisa lives in Accra allows us to conclude that Aisa lives in Africa. All right, here are three for you to try. I'd like you to go ahead and fill these out and bring these to class tomorrow and we'll see how you do.